mass spectrometry is an analytical technique uh, that separates uh, components of mixtures based on their uh, mass to charge ratios and measures their abundance. So in a nutshell, it's, it's a good technique for uh, separating a, a wide variety of uh, analytes, providing we can get them into the gas phase. What I find quite exciting about uh, the new technology or, or the uh, techniques that encompass uh, ambient ionization, uh, mass spectrometry, is the fact uh, that the uh, ionization takes place outside of the mass spectrometer. So uh, we actually require uh, very little sample preparation. Uh, it's very minimal. In some cases, you may have to do a little bit of sample cleanup. Uh, we generally don't require uh, any uh, separation to take place prior to introducing the sample to the ionizing method. And uh, we ex uh, ionize the samples by an, a number of means. We can either use uh, a, an electrospray charge droplet to extract the samples. We can use a f thermal uh, desorption and then ionize the samples by a chemical ionization means or we can use a laser to desorb and ablate the samples, which are then post-analyzed, uh, uh, ionized and analyzed by the mass spectrometer. It's becoming increasingly more popular. So when we uh, originally obtained our instrument, I think it was in about 2006, uh, we were certainly one of the uh, first universities uh, in the New England area to have the technology. Uh, in fact, the uh, biggest market at the time was the FBI, uh, Homeland Security. So they snapped these instruments up as soon as they became available. So we, we had about an eight month wait. And since uh, 2006, the number of institutes adopting uh, this technology has certainly increased and that is evident by the number of uh, people making inquiries uh, to myself, uh, asking for my feedback on how the technique works. Uh, is it robust? Is it reliable? Will it work for them? And most of the time, my answer is always, yes, it will. And most core facilities, I'm a firm believer that most firm, uh, core facilities should have at least one ambient ionizing technique uh, amongst all the others that they offer. We have uh, DART direct analysis in real time and that has proved invaluable for the work we do here at Boston College. If you actually uh, look in the book, uh, the, the uses or the applications which people have used these various techniques and applied uh, to the uh, various types of samples kind of range from uh, forensic analysis, which is one of the big uh, reasons why this is really taken off so well. Uh, it's recently uh, moving into the operating theatre. So uh, Zoltan Takis, who actually helped develop one of these methods, uh, has uh, recently, I think, been granted a patent for his eye knife. So the range of samples that this is amenable to is vast. It's only limited by one's uh, own imagination. So whatever you can think of generally, these samples can be applied to. The eye knife, uh, like I said, was uh, developed uh, by Zoltan and Graham Cooks at Purdue. And uh, that uh, is, is a knife which uh, they've uh, coupled to a surgical uh, laser cutting device. So any patients going in for uh, having sort of tumours removed, one of the big issues is that you don't want to remove he more healthy tissue than is absolutely necessary. The eye knife uh, and the library that Zoltan's uh, developed uh, basically gives back the surgeon readbacks in real time. So he can start cutting in the middle of the tumour and, for instance, the screen will flash red to indicate that these cells are cancerous. As he uh, starts cutting away from the centre, the screen might flash green, indicating 
that the tissue now he's cutting into is healthy. So he can uh, quite literally just cut around the uh, tumour, uh, being safe in the knowledge that he's cutting away minimal amount of healthy tissue. Another kind of method also developed by the Purdue people, Graham Cook's lab, is a paper spray. So that's quite a simple uh, technique in which you cut out uh, a triangular piece of paper, you can connect it to an uh, alligator clip, uh, apply the sample, whether it be blood or other biological fluid, and you put a solvent onto it and with the application of the solvent and the voltage you get an electrospray uh, being generated from the tip of the filter paper. Uh, this has led uh, to quite good reproducibility and it's proven to be very amenable to quantitative analysis. So uh, they've developed uh, these little cartridges which uh, they're trying to uh, market at the moment as a way of doing point of care treatment. So you can go to the doctor, you know, to, you can sample a bit of blood, spot it onto one of these systems uh, and get an instant read back of a, an amount of certain metabolite, biomarker, whatever he may be interested in looking at. Some of these techniques, uh, what I mean by that, uh, they're, they're starting to miniaturize uh, a lot of the mass specs and with these new ambient ionizing methods, it means that they can take the samples and they can take them out into the real world. So for instance, they may be interested in uh, looking for uh, trace analysis of explosives at the site. So rather than collecting the samples, sending them back to the lab, waiting for the results, uh, these instruments can now be taken directly to, to the uh, point of uh, explosion and then samples can be uh, analysed in situ, giving instant readback potentially of the type of explosive used. The FPI, like I said, have this, these instruments. The, uh, the types of uh, instruments which are at airports, uh, I think, work on this technology, so where they take the swabs and they put them in. Uh, it's, it's all the kind of same technology. But they're trying to really uh, miniaturise these, and what I mean by that is mass specs with ambient ionising uh, on the front end to, so, so you can literally walk around with these instruments and I think they're actually in the process of developing a backpack version. So, uh, you know, that may be proved useful for the army if they're in a situation where they think uh, biological weapons are being used, chemical weapons, then this can obviously me uh, measure quality of air and give any potential readback instantaneously if chemical uh, weapons are being used. The reason we kind of undertook this uh, when we did, like I said, these techniques started off with uh, direct analysis in real time, DART and desorption electrospray, DESI, in around 2005. And since then there's been a plethora of uh, techniques which have kind of spun off from these. Some are similar, some are completely different, some have taken a high, uh, a hyphenated approach. So they've combined uh, various methods, whether it be uh, atmospheric pressure photoionization and DART, or whether they've uh, coupled a DESI with a laser. So they're trying to think of different ways to analyze different samples, constantly improving, uh, tinkering around. You know, as scientists, people like to always find of better, different methods of doing it. But in the meantime, what I actually came across was there was an awful lot of acronyms uh, floating around and it, it got somewhat confusing as to what some of these are. And I think if you do a, a Google search on ambient ionization mass spectrometry, I think it lists about 40 uh, different ambient ionizing techniques which are available. The book doesn't cover all of them, but what we've actually done is try to take the common ones or the ones which are currently commercially available. And because there was no reference at the time, you know, you had to go dig into the literature, find out, 
you know what you could about one technique and then go into the library and find you know about another technique uh, I kind of contacted Chip who uh, co-inventor of the dart and I said how would you be interested in putting a, a volume together that encompasses ambient ionizing mass spectrometry and to my surprise he seemed somewhat rather reluctant at first uh, but ultimately he agreed and I think we've put together what's turned out to be a, a useful volume uh, and hopefully quite educational.